Well, there's lots of different categories of sentimental stuff. Some are a little bit easier to deal with than others, but I think the category that is the toughest are things that we inherit. And some of them we've even like, selected and handpicked for ourselves, but then we get to a place where we don't want to manage it anymore. So how do we declutter this stuff in a way where we still preserve the memories of the ones we care about, but don't feel guilty or resentful? So like I said, I think one of the toughest categories of stuff in our home are things that are given to us where there's an expectation tied to it, that we're expected to keep it and to continue the tradition, maybe even display it. And isn't it amazing how resentment can really start to creep in when we feel like we don't have a choice. I think it's when we feel like there is this expectation that we're gonna be letting someone down if we don't continue to keep these items that gets into tricky territory because we don't wanna feel resentful about the people that have passed this stuff on, right? We loved them, we cared about them. And so how do we find this balance between keeping the things we want to keep but being able to let the other stuff go while keeping friends and family members happy too? And so today I am so glad to get to visit with someone who has firsthand experience in this. Dawn Raymaker recently had to go through her mom's estate. And so she's gonna share with us lots of tips and ideas for how we can navigate this and do it successfully so by the end, we feel good about it, but our loved ones feel good about it as well. And you actually, you have your own YouTube channel, Living by Heart, and you have been doing a series on decluttering and all of the emotions that go along with it. And so, I mean, sentimental stuff is the hardest. We tell people like, don't start there, <laughs> like start in your kitchen. Uh, don't oh. start with sentimental stuff. But at some point we have to tackle it. And often we have acquired stuff not through any choice of our own, but because we are the ones responsible to go through it after a loved one has passed away. And so, like you said, you've had this experience in the last couple of years. And so let's just start at the beginning, Dawn. So when you're faced with a whole household of stuff, where did you guys even begin to start going through your mom's house? Yes, that's such a great question. And, and it's really great that we first said, where did you guys start? <laughs> because the number one thing was having my sister with me to do this. And yeah. so if at all possible, I would encourage everyone listening, if there's a way to bring a trusted friend or a family member in that would support the idea of blessing and releasing things, um, mm -hmm. having that, that person with you is so, so, so key. And I think honestly, like on a practical note, what really helped my sister and I the most was my mom had a town home. And so we had some space where she had a garage and we could literally zone everything. And we started mm -hmm. just in each room. So we decided not to try to tackle the whole house at once. That was too overwhelming. We started with, actually, we did not do the kitchen first either because we were like, yeah. It's really overwhelming. So we did not start with hard stuff. We started with yeah. easy stuff. And we had basically mm -hmm. three zones. We had a donation pile. We had a, a garage sale or consignment pile. And then we also had the trash pile. And just having mm -hmm. it out of the house and in the garage in those different spaces helped us to feel like we were really making progress. We were on a bit of a timeline too. So in our case, we really didn't have time to sort of pour over each item. So we also did have a little place for more sentimental things where we knew we'd have to go through those mm -hmm. at more of a lengthy time. Yeah. And that's good that you didn't have to make the final decision necessarily right away that you could categorize it and then let a little time pass emotion settle and then come back to it. So I mean, at this point in life, both you and your sister you have homes, like you said, you've been married 16 years. You're, you have all the things in your house that you right. need. So now when you're looking at a whole another household of stuff, how did you decide what you brought into your home and what you donated? Yeah. And that's so hard, right? Because when somebody passes, sometimes we feel like we just want to keep it all. Um, and instead yeah. what my sister was actually instrumental in just encouraging me to just pick, you know, one or two items, whether that be photos or something else that sort of represented that season or that memory. And we also set them some things aside for grandchildren or other family members who would want a remembrance of my mom. And so I certainly felt like we did right by the items, but we didn't need to keep it all. And it's hard mm -hmm. though, right? Because in photo albums, mm -hmm. you're looking at so many, and sometimes we have this 
belief that it's wrong to throw that stuff away. And again, right. having my sister there, she was able to give me permission and she was like, nope, nope, we're just going to pick like one or two that represent that time period or that part of her life. And then we're going to let the rest go. And actually yeah. beyond that, we even scanned the photos in to our photo app and had a okay. digital copy and released the physical copies. And so some people may yeah. not feel comfortable with that, but it's totally mm -hmm. that process of kind of like, where do I want to store this? How do I want to store this? And what's going to help me remember her the best? Yeah, I think it's difficult, uh, you know, certainly when someone has just passed away, but as time goes on to be so sober minded about how much inventory can I manage? Because it, there's such a fine line between it being an asset and happy memories, you know, attached to these things and how I remember them and it going over the line of a burden and it gets put in boxes and stacked up and we never go through it again because it's, it's simply so much. And so yeah. I think there is so much wisdom in, in being able to pick out the favorites, but like you said, it, it sometimes feels wrong, right? Yes. And let the other stuff go. So here yes. we are now, you know, a year and a half removed from when, or about a year when you went through all your mom's stuff. Do you have any regrets over any of the stuff that you got rid of? I don't, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of feel like I sound like the poster child for minimalism, but I, I really don't. Like, in fact, I was, I was saying recently, like, I think I could have let go of more and even mm -hmm. have been. I was just sharing that I went to the consignment store last week and was able to release a music box that she had given me years ago. I didn't have a super tight attachment to it, but because she had given it to me, I had held on to it. And when mm -hmm. I gave it to the gal at the consignment store, she was like, oh my gosh, I love this. This is what my grandma or my, I think it was her mom used to sing to me and she was going to take it home with her. And I just had yeah. this like comfort, like, oh my goodness, so yeah. we can really enjoy this who has a very strong connection to it. And it wasn't for me to keep. Yeah, yeah that's so, so good. So what would you say to the person who might be watching saying like, I get it. I am with you guys. Like, I want to have a few, you know, special things I'm going to remember this person by, but I am getting pressure from another family member or my mom, or <laughs> I don't want to just get down on moms, but I <laughs> sometimes you guys pressure us a lot. So, you know, our, my sister, my aunt, you know, someone else is pressuring me that I need to keep all of this stuff. What would you say to them? I know. Well, this is when we get to talk about boundaries and, you know, it's really okay to set a boundary with those kinds of family members. And I know that it can get sticky, especially if you share space with that particular family member. Mm -hmm. Generally though, I would think through, you know, I just want to empower anyone who's listening, think through what you need and the bandwidth that you have both energy wise and also storage wise, because I bet it's mm -hmm. less than all the stuff. <laughs> and so it's, it's yeah. you know, there needs to be a line. And sometimes we have the situation where we have things for other family members to pick up or to deal with, mm -hmm. and they might be in our space or in our garage. And in that case, I just recommend setting a deadline and letting them know, Hey, mm -hmm. you know, May 1st, the donation truck is coming or the dumpster is coming and feel free to collect your items prior to that date. But then at least you know that your space will be clear at that time and that you can stay on track with what you need in terms of the decluttering and process of letting go that you're in. Yeah, I think that's so good. And I love Dana from Miss Love comes clean when she's talked about this similar topic. She would say, you know, as she was going through a loved one's house, and um, she would see something that maybe they could use in their home. She would say like, okay, well, if I'm going to bring this rocking chair into our house, am I willing to get rid of one of the chairs that's yes. already in there? So looking yeah. at it like, okay, I am swapping something out instead of just adding more inventory. And she said it was yeah. amazing when I would think about it that way, like, oh, it's a beautiful rocking chair. I should take this home. But she went, when she would actually think about, okay, but what chair am I going to get rid of in my living room? Well, <laughs> no one's going to sit in that to watch movies at night. Right. And so right. it wasn't actually practical, even though it was beautiful and it was a family favorite. And so I thought that was really helpful too, to think about swapping things out. In fact, you said your, your sister actually did that. Yes, she did. So we had found, um, I shared this on my video last week. It was just astounding. We found 11 sets of China in my mom's home and all different patterns. And, and she had inherited a lot of these. She was kind of like the landing place 
for a lot of family heirlooms from other generations, most notably my great grandma who lived to be 106. So I think most of those china sets were hers, but my sister really wanted to have my mom's china. And so she actually swapped it out. She had a pattern that she yeah. didn't like as well. And so she grabbed mom's china and then she released the one that she had. And we found an antiquities dealer who helped us kind of find good homes for all of these things. And believe it or not, there are people out there looking for those exact pieces. And so it felt yeah. it felt really good. We had commented to each other at the end, like we felt like we really did right by these items. They were special. They did travel through many generations and now they're being used by someone who can really yeah. enjoy them rather than sitting in my basement. You know, that would be a travesty. So it yeah. felt really good. Yeah, that's good. And so let's talk about that for a second. So there was stuff that you didn't know the value, right? Which happens to many of us. Like yeah. we're thinking about Antique Roadshow and like that could be <laughs> worth $12,000 and I can't just donate it to Goodwill, right? So how did you track down this person and, and how did it work with them? Yes. And so my, I think it was just literally a Google search. My sister did the research to find this particular lady and she just worked out of her home, but she had like a team. So you could decide if you wanted her to just kind of survey your items and see, Hey, is there anything that's worth anything here? Or she had like a whole team of people that could come in and clean your entire home for you and do the estate sale and the whole nine yards. So she kind of just, you know, we did a little bit more a la carte approach, um, but she mm -hmm. literally was local to us. So we drove the items that she thought would have value to her and she inventoried them. And then she listed them on her antiquities dealer site or something. And so then was mm -hmm. able to connect people with these unique pieces. Um, there was the most bizarre stuff. I mean, you just, you don't know what some of it even is. I was sharing with you, like some of the little dishes with lids. I'm like, what did this hold? I don't know. And a lot of like smoking yeah. accoutrements, which, you know, culturally at the time <laughs> was en vogue. Yep. And now it's like, nobody does this. So it was kind yeah. of, it was very interesting, very interesting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know Don, we were asked uh, recently, a gal said that she had a whole storage unit of her mom's stuff who had uh, passed away a few years ago. And she was like, I don't even know where to get started with this. And so what would you recommend for those of us who are just like, where, where do you start? Yes. It, and I honestly would say one, one box at a time. And again, having that second person or, you know, a, a couple of close people with you is so helpful to process and, and also to tell the stories of the items. I, I really yeah. feel like the process of grieving is so interwoven into this decluttering. And sometimes all we really need to do is hold the item, tell the story, talk about the aspects of the person that it reminds us of, and then we can release it. And, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's just the storytelling that needs to happen. Yeah. So I would just say like for people who are totally overwhelmed, first of all, I totally get it. I was completely there mm -hmm. myself and I also yeah. take it one step at a time. And, and my sister and I had the luxury of doing like a big chunk of time on the weekends once a month. But you know, if you can even spread it out a little bit more, like an hour here, an hour there, but mm -hmm. putting it on the calendar was key for us because it never was going to yeah. happen unless we scheduled it. Cause it just felt that overwhelming. Yeah. And I know too, the question often comes up of kind of like, well, when should I, you know, if I lost someone close to me, when should I be able to deal with their stuff and declutter their stuff? And so, I mean, what's the, the grieving timeline where it's like, okay, now at this benchmark, now go declutter their closet. I mean, what, what does that look like? Right. And I think the really complicated answer to that is like, whenever you're ready, you know, and, and yet it's such a balance because we also have to challenge ourselves not to just leave it in the basement. We have to actually work through and um, set sort of a deadline even for ourselves in the sense of, I don't want to endlessly just hold on to inventory and not deal with it. So it's, it's really, mm -hmm. I think, challenging ourselves to confront the stories and the pain and the loss also while also mm -hmm. honoring our own process of like, you know what, I might not be able to do the whole bin today. Um, I might need to take a break. Yeah. I might need to just totally lose it mm -hmm. when I'm done with this for a second. You know, it's okay to really kind of pay attention to what your heart needs in the midst of that. And certainly my sister and mm -hmm. I 
went through that too, where we were just, we just had a moment, you know, and it would come over us and you just have to let it happen and then just keep moving. Yeah. And John, I think too, you know, going back to this idea that it's not necessarily the stuff that the memories are triggered to or attached to. Um, I find myself all the time, like, uh, at a store or someone else's house and I see something that was my grandma's or, or something yeah. like that. And so I, I know the fear that once the stuff's gone, the memories are going to go with it. But I do think there's so many other ways that we're reminded of these, these people throughout the day. Totally. I agree with that. And I think that was something that sort of surprised me about the decluttering that we did is I have found that it's not so much the stuff or the things that remind me of my mom. It's actually the places I go or the trips that we take or have taken. um, Or if I just am reminded even through relationships, you know, times with my sisters or my uncle, it's like, oh, mom used to be here and we'll remember her and the beautiful things about Mm -hmm. who she was. I really haven't connected to the stuff as much as I thought I would. And I think going back Mm -hmm. to what we were saying in the beginning, like it has allowed me then to sort of release more over time now that I'm a little Mm -hmm. further out from her actual passing. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. And I love too what you talked about, um, that she had bins of good intentions. And so I think this can be wisdom for those of us who are still managing our own inventory in our house. I know for many, the awareness is that someday my kids may have to go through this stuff. And so tell us a little bit about all the good intention stuff that you found as you were decluttering her house. Yes, yes. So we actually, particularly in her office, we found a very large tote, like a big bin um, that was full of stationery. So, I mean, judging from the amount of it, she was planning on writing lots of letters. And then she had lots and lots and lots of greeting cards. But was what was kind of endearing and sweet about it was that many of the greeting cards I could tell would have gone to me. I could just tell from the occasion or the style of the card. And it, and it caused me to get emotional when we were doing it because it was like, oh my gosh, like, I never got these, but I got them now, I guess, you know, and so there was a sweetness there, but also sort of a sadness because I realized, wow, you know, she, she intended to send these, but it never happened like so many, so many of us run into because she really didn't have a plan and she was really stuck and overwhelmed by all of this stuff. And so it really showed me the importance of like paring down and then having a system Mm -hmm. in place that will really allow you to carry out that intention and and cause it to become an actual realized goal and and my mom just had that all over the house and so it was it was kind of sad and also endearing yeah and i do think there's a lot of wisdom in being able to be realistic with ourselves of how many hours are in the day and can i finish the craft projects can i finish the scrapbooks can i send all the cards or would it be better to release this inventory to, to other people that could make use of it and just keep a much smaller amount that, that really is more manageable? More realistic. Yeah, that's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know too, Don. we often hear, um, you know, what do we do if maybe our spouse has inherited stuff from loved ones that have passed away and they don't seem at all ready or interested in parting with it? Is there anything we can do or say to to nudge them along. I'm like totally putting you on the spot here with this <laughs> um, I really feel like, you know, inviting them to kind of process the, the memories with you could be helpful. Um, and then mm-hmm. seeing if that shifts things because, you know, maybe there's um, a memory or something that they really have attached to that item. And just simply expressing it, like we had talked about earlier, can allow us to feel differently about the item and allow us to sort of just be able to bless and release it. Um, But also, I think, you know, just making reflections is actually really powerful, too. And that would look like, you know, I see that this item is very important to you. Um, Can you tell me more about what it means to you emotionally? When else have you felt Mm -hmm. that emotion? Do you have any memories? And sometimes, you know, you can challenge people to even, let's compile a photo book. You know, could we take a picture Mm -hmm. of this item and then also write out or document the memory or vacation or whatever event it was that reminds us of. And then it's actually in a usable form, you know, because obviously if it's sitting in a bin, we don't 
see it or enjoy it, but if we have it in a usable yeah. form, it may actually have a deeper effect. So sometimes you yeah. have to show people that and you can't necessarily mm -hmm. tell them that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And of course, I'm I'm a huge proponent of having a memory bin or putting some kind of container around what it is we decide yes. to keep. I mean, you might have one memory bin specific to a certain loved one, and that's totally fine. But there's something about having a container and a limit that causes us to judge stuff differently. All of a sudden, I have something to weigh it against. I'm not just holding it up and being like, should I keep it? Should I not? But when I have something like, is it worth taking up space in the, the container, the limited space I have, I think we can look at Absolutely. it a little bit differently. And it, it does help to, it feels odd. It, it, it sounds restrictive, but it actually it causes it to be much easier to make these decisions too. So I, I think agree. that can be helpful as well. I agree. Awesome. Well, Dawn, thank you so much for visiting with us about this. You're much more qualified, both from your <laughs> professional experience and your personal experience to be able to talk about this. So I'm so glad that you could help us uh, validate and unpack some of these emotions that go into all this stuff. Thank you so much for having me. I loved talking with you, Dawn. It's so fun to process this all together. And of course, we'll link to your YouTube channel and that playlist that you have uh, with decluttering because it is, it's so helpful. If nothing else, just so you know that you're not alone, <laughs> you're feeling yes. all these things. So 100%. we'll definitely link to that down below as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sounds awesome. Great. We'll see you later.